In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tools to help you place and work with insulators to try to model a pole a little more realistically and to get the insulator behavior uh, more like you'd find it in the real world. So let's go ahead and we'll just make a quick and dirty 40 foot pole here. And if I go down to my pre built cross arm assemblies and pick a single cross arm, place it on the pole, what you can see is okay I have exactly what I expect a single cross arm with uh, three spans on insulators so now let's say I go ahead and I bump the cross arm count up to two you notice that the insulators live on the front cross arm and although the load is in fact spread across both arms visually it isn't that way so uh, let's just for the sake of argument go ahead and pick these insulators and you can see here that I have an attribute called side. If I pick back, as you expect, what happens is the insulators move in fact to the back cross arm uh, from the front. Now again the load is still split. But if I select both, what it does is it implicitly creates a second set of insulators on uh, the front arm and on the back arm. And as you'd expect, I get double the amount of wind lo load from the insulators, double the amount of offset moment. But I didn't have to create any additional spans or any, addi any additional insulators in my inventory. The system just knows, well, this is a double cross arm construction. And so that that makes sense. So that's, that's a pretty helpful tool. Um, now, one thing that's kind of interesting is the attachment point has now implicitly moved to a point directly between the two insulators. So if I go to this span and change its rotation to, uh, let's call it uh, 45 degrees like that, you can see that it's rotating at that sort of median point. And so the load is in fact, and the offset position is in fact moved to a point uh, equidistant between the tips of the insulators on the frost front cross arm and the insulators on the back cross arm. So that is pretty helpful. Um, let's go ahead and take this insulator and copy it down to here and convert it into a post and like so. So another tool that we have now provided is called the span by section tool. So you notice that this uh, post is probably on the wrong side given the way that the span angles uh, are. Whereas if I go and say rotate to span angles, it flips it over and sets the post's angle to an angle that allows it to most easily take the tension from the front span and the back span by bisecting the ingress and egress angles of the two spans. So that's a pretty uh, useful tool as well. And I can do that as many times as I want. So if I change this and I said, no, in fact, the, the angle of this is, let's call it, uh, 60 degrees like that so now it's on the wrong side I could just say go nope I want to go ahead and rotate the span angles and in fact it rotates around so that it's bisecting the angle I can also do the same trick manually by saying that the rotation angle um, is <laughs> and so the code is IND for independent equals 90. And so what I can do is I can rotate the object's angle without rotating the span angles that are associated with it. I can do the same thing by holding the control key down and using my tracker. And so you see what happens is I very, as I move this around, the span angles don't change, only the insulator angle changes. So it, it allows me to create a um, insulator that very, very closely matches exactly what I'm trying to build in the real world. And we'll go ahead and we'll go back to rotate to span angles like that. 